truly one of the greats in professional wrestling. Done so much in front of the camera, now doing so much behind the camera. She is a TNA Impact Wrestling Hall of Famer. Her and Austin Kong really helped this revolution, evolution of women's wrestling. I was there for, for that. It was just amazing to see the growth, to see her growth. It's just been incredible. What a journey. Now, TNA Wrestling has some big shows coming up in Tampa, and there's other shows coming up. They've been really doing well. This is just so exciting time. WWE NXT and TNA Wrestling have collaborated as well. Who thought? Who knew? Who would have thought? Would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> so, Gail Kim, thank you so much. And I want to, we'll just go right off the bat. Tampa and shows and schedules and things coming up. What do yes. you got going on for these fans? This weekend, Tampa, for the first time in 11 years, TNA Wrestling is returning. Um, like you said, you never know who's going to show up because we're not too far from NXT. <laughs> we have been collaborating with them. The whole term is NXT TNA. Um, I love it. I love that we're doing this for wrestling in general, especially in this time of maybe a lot of tribalism that's going on. And I think it's really important for wrestling as a whole, you know, so wrestling wrestling fans remember that they can be just a wrestling fan and now they have the possibility of having their dream matches from wrestlers that come from different companies whether it's international domestic because we work with AAA, new japan we work with just so many other promotions i think it's the most exciting time in wrestling right now i'm thrilled i'm thrilled with how tna is going now again and i'm just happy to be a part of it and Gail, you are doing so much behind the scenes and helping so much talent and creative, and it's great. And I want to talk about women in power, especially in what was a male-dominated profession. We're seeing a change in that, obviously. But even before we get to that, yeah, does it make it more challenging working with all the different groups, Mexico, yeah. WWE, NXT, and, and the ones you mentioned and all? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just busier, you know, because I am talent relations. That is one of my roles at TNA, um, head of talent relations. So I do generally uh, handle all the talent, but I also have a team of people that help me. So we work as a team to make these collaborations happen. Like I said, AAA, you know, NXT, New Japan, all these people. Um, I think it's great. I, I love seeing... Uh, I, I'm hearing, and I don't want to ruin any surprises, but I think the fans, I'm going to drop a couple of seeds here that there's going to be some upcoming stars that you're going to see come into TNA, and it's going to be truly exciting. I think just tune in and you'll see. And not only that, we have the Hardys back. We have the hottest pro wrestler in pro wrestling right now, Joe Hendry, who's just made this incredible climb because I've been saying this all day. I don't think people realize Joe Hendry has been around for a long time. You know, this guy has hustled and really just taken, I always call it kind of the John Cena formula. He's kind of taken that kind of formula. He's uh, gotten over with the fans because he understands what they like. You know, it's a cross between entertainment and bringing it in the ring. He's just, he's just a great guy. I love seeing people who work so hard get the rewards at the end of the day and he is one of them i'll tell you someone else who's one of them it's gail kim <laughs> thank you, you worked your tail off i did you spots and and you know you had to go to one company once and then back before <laughs> yeah. you really got you know elevated and everything and really did an outstanding job when you were with tna impact wrestling back then doing it and now you're in a, a powerful position yeah. and i want you to address what does that feel like just as a person hey you're a person, doesn't matter, male, female, whatever, that's it. But a but, you are representing women and yes. having, not in front of the camera, but doing it behind the camera. What has that been like? It's been, I, you know, and I, I'm gonna be truthful. It's been a battle, to be honest. I, I will say from the beginning of my career, I started wrestling in the year 2000. I took my first bump. It's been 24 years later. And I still feel like every day there's a new challenge, a new fight to happen. And just having the little wins happen here and there, it's very gratifying. And we're we're at the point where women main event pay-per-views, uh, shows, and it's nothing. It's it's literally not a surprise anymore. It's nothing that's um 
I guess it's seen as special, but it's also a very normal thing now and accepted. And they know that the women are going to bring it and they're going to deliver. And I, I never thought in my wildest dreams when I was fighting back in 2005, six, seven, whatever it was, that we get to this day and I'd be able to still be a part of the wrestling industry and see it firsthand. See it firsthand. You've lived <laughs> it, you've done it, you've been there, and now bringing it to a whole nother level. What is it like working with Gail, are you working with solely the women or no? You're working with the Not men as well. Everyone. Yeah, I work with, I think it's a misconception that there might have been a time where I was just strictly producing the knockouts. And of course, they know how invested I am in the knockouts. But being in a management position, I, of course, care for the entire roster. I care about where the company is going to grow to. Uh, I care about us bring, bringing us to the next level. I want to be a part of that. And the guys know that too. Um, of course, the girls, obviously the knockouts division, because I helped fight for it. I, I, I was a part of it from the inception of it. So, of course, that's always going to be a part of my heart and something that I'll always be attached to and care for. But I do care about seeing such as the new homegrown talent that we've brought up, the young talent that maybe you guys may have a tiny radar on, but like the Leon Slaters, the Jason Hutches. We want to create this next AJ Styles, you know, uh, someone that we created and uh, has the success on that level. And I think we're doing it. Yeah. Well, it's so inspiring. <laughs> it's so important. Yeah. I think one thing you touched on that I want to follow up with yeah. is the fact that now when you all are collectively as a group deciding things, we're not going to pull the curtain back all the way, but fans know whatever they know. But yeah. in the sense of this scale, now it's not so much more of a fight to say, hey, let's put Jordan Grace and championship match in the main event. Now right. it's like everybody's like, you know, hey, this is, it's not looked at as man and woman. It's more looked like, yeah, that makes sense. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. sure. Who's going to deliver? Who's going to bring the best match? And that comes from what they've done in the past, right? It's their consistency. It's their reliability. And we know that, you know what? They're ready. They, they can do this. They can carry if you're going to call it the, that weight on their shoulders to main event a huge show. And I believe in everyone who has main evented. They deserve that spot. Yeah. The Hardys, Nick Nemeth, the champion now. Yeah. His brother. His brother is great. I love his brother. <laughs> he is such a good kid. I mean, I, I call him a kid because he has a kid to me. But what, what a good guy, you know. And that's, you know, people who just have great attitudes. I've always talked about this because – I think uh, we don't talk about this as much because we always talk about the in-ring work. As person in management, I do care about how people carry themselves behind the scenes as well as how they carry themselves as a professional in the ring because that goes a long way. I mean, people want to support people who hustle, who work hard, who make the sacrifices and just want to work as a team, I would say, most mostly in, than anything, right? Because it could be... Wrestling can be an egotistical sport, as we call it. It can be very easily. Um, but I think we have a great thing going right now at TNA. Pro wrestling has always been, will always be so individualized. Yes. Because yeah. it usually is one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two, three-on-three. Yeah. But yes. in the yeah. sense of you're trying to build your own brand, too. But yes. the most successful ones, the ones that have done very well, have been able to work as a team in a company. 100%. I always looked at, um, you know, throughout my career, I always looked forward to wrestling different types of talent and everyone had a different strength. You know, ODB was this crazy character and, um, you know, brought someone, but she had a very different wrestling style to a Velvet Sky or, you know, a Madison Rain or a Mickey James. So I thrived on all that. And I always just wanted to bring the best match out of any opponent, opponent that I had. Tell us more about the women's division right now. And I know, yeah. tell me about Kylan King's been on the shelf. Yes. So Working excited. your tail off. You have posted. I yes. or at least retweeted. Yeah. She's posted because I was checking that out as well like that. And yeah. she's someone that's worked before the circuit and all. And it's really one of those that you're, that you're mentioning. Hey, homegrown, yeah. we can build this up. What are your I thoughts there and how's she doing? Oh my gosh, you know, when when I first saw her, I was like, we need to hire her. And I was on this mission with, with other people. Hey, you need to mention too, because I wasn't the only, you know, I'm not the only voice in this company. It helps when other people, other wrestlers, other management will say, that girl's good. And we knew it from the beginning. 
And she actually won our last year end of uh, end of year awards as the star to look out for in 2025. Unfortunately, got injured and put that on the back burner. So I'm just so excited. We're getting closer and closer to the time that she's ready. And I don't want her to rush because I want her to be at her top game. Um, but I think 2025 will be the year to watch for Kylan King for sure. How do you look at the women's division now? Because you've seen so many incarnations when yeah. you were with Awesome Kong back then. We saw yeah. a transition over time, the beautiful people and what, yes. what they meant. Then Deanna Perrazzo and Jordan Grace taking it and building it up as well to keep growing, growing, growing. Yeah. What do you look at the roster currently right now and who you awesome. have there and, and everybody yeah, you have? Um, we have a great roster of girls right now, the Central Core. I'm looking to add to that right now. Um, We've got some surprises coming up, I think, that will be great for this next couple, you know, till the end of the year that you'll see. Looking to rebuild this tag team division because we've been lacking a little bit in that department because we've only had two tag teams, really. And we want to grow that. I, I really want to make sure that the knockouts are kind of mixed. We have a strong tag division, a strong knockouts division, and even a secondary storyline that's very uh, very strong uh, even to have the girls mixed in we have alicia edwards that's in with the system and she's working managing and wrestling and our tag team champion i mean i just want those girls to be able to get experience in every facet of the business um and see what they enjoy and what their strengths are because i think everyone has different strengths um when i started in my career wwe had um raw women's division and then SmackDown was kind of like the mix of the girls who uh, were more kind of like Tori and Dawn and Stacy, and they could wrestle too. But I like that we had a little something for all the fans to see. And I think that's really important to utilize women in any role that they're good at. Can't just be, you know, wrestling and that's it. I think every, there's important roles. I think managers are just starting to make a little uh, resurgence again of importance. And I love seeing that now too. Gail Kim, are you part of the system? <laughs> Maybe for that one day, I put, they forced me to put that jacket on. <laughs> it's on my Instagram. If anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> I did put my picture on there with them. Uh, I did. I knew we would get something going on here with Gail Kim. She does it all, but I knew there was something in there. So I trust the system. <laughs> all right, a couple more questions to get you done because I know we got to get you out of here. If not, Dr. Ross is going to just get a little. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Ross. Oh, he'll, he'll be mad. I don't want to get him mad. Football season's coming up. Go yeah. Chicago, whatever team he's in, whatever. All right, so Ash by Elegance. Yes. That is so much, so much fun. And so you're oh talking God. about the entertainment yes. and, and with that and all. Just what are your thoughts of getting her in and what you've seen so far and how's that going? I've loved Ash. I mean, just to give you guys another perspective, her work ethic, you know, her positivity, uh, her experience that she gets to bring to the knockouts division. Uh, I don't think there's enough said for when, uh, for when veterans come into a locker room and are new and they can help the younger talent evolve and whether that's because i think today it's so wrestling based that i think people forget about maybe the character work or the storylines and she's very good at that she's very polished um she knows what she's doing she's impressed me from day one so i'm, I'm really happy to have her as part of our knockouts division and a couple more questions we still have a few more minutes so <laughs> what is it like working behind the scenes with everybody tommy dreamer works behind the scenes yes yes he does right that's not yes he I does a, no no don at all. Here. I'm just trying to get, so no no so the people you're working with it's good because yeah. listen tna wrestling's in a new uh, sort of a new scott demore brought it great things by scott now yep. scott's not there so it's a new sort of yeah it is the same but new as far as behind the scenes yeah. so how's that been I mean, like it's, yeah it's been awesome uh i think we've pretty much now kind of verged or merged the business side with the wrestling and they really have leaned on the people that are the experts in the wrestling field. Um, and they respect us and hear our voices. So it's really great to have that collaboration because honestly, since the beginning of this year, you've only seen positive results and I, I'm very happy. Yeah. The crowds have been really good. 
the TV ratings, we'll Access TV, Access TV, Thursday nights, eight o'clock. Plus, you can watch on Roku. <laughs> That's okay. It was not. It, nobody knows you sneeze but me, Gail. The, the video's on me right now. So anyway, now they know. But now they know. God bless you, Gail. Jim. <laughs> Access TV, eight p.m. Thursday nights, two hours. Great action. Great storylines. Yeah. Great promos. Then also Roku. You can watch TNA, all the classics, all different awesome. stuff, or even past shows recently. Yeah. It's so cool. You're that getting that exposure, working with NXT, working with other groups, getting the exposure and all. Here's my last question for you, Gail Kim. Yes. This has been bothering me for a while now. What? Ash by Elegance has a concierge. Uh, Gail Kim, please. is Dr. Ross your concierge? I want to strangle him. I think everyone does his interrupting his, Oh, I think he just needs to get his ass. Sorry if I said that word, but his booty kicked by Rosemary currently. Cause I noticed that she's kind of stalking Ash right now, but concierge may get in the way. <laughs> oh, Gail, Gail, wait, wait. Yeah. That's for Ash. But what yeah. I'm asking is Gail Kim is Dr. Yeah. Ross, your concierge. Oh, you gotta ask him that question. <laughs> I won't answer that. Don't want to offend Dr. Ross. I love that way you segued that though into Ash and Rosemary and got the storyline in. That was per. That was great. That was good. Great, Gail Kim. Thank you as always. Thank you for what you do for this business all these years. It is much appreciated by many people. I hope you realize that. And also, thank you. I appreciate those words. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Bye. Talk to you soon.